Hello ladies and gents, welcome to another repair video. A few weeks ago my brother-in-law got in touch with me and basically said that he'd been out scrapping. Uh, for those of you that don't know, scrapping is where you go out and just drive around picking up scrap metal. And my brother-in-law, or rather two of my brother-in-laws, are both scrap men. And they go out every day, they pick up scrap metal and then they take it to a scrap yard and sell it for cash. So that is their profession. And a couple of weeks ago they got in touch and said that they had a couple of PlayStation 4s. So these PlayStation 4s were literally found in a pile of scrap thrown out by the owners. And he gave them me as a challenge to try and fix them. So I don't know anything about these consoles. I don't know where they've come from. I don't know what's happened to them or what could be possibly wrong with them. But as you can see, they are absolutely filthy. So there's that one. That one's not too bad, that's the mild one. Believe me, that's, that is genuinely the mild one. So we've got that one there. Uh, it's a PlayStation 4 original. Uh, the, uh, the original FAT, not the 1200. And then we've got this one. And that is genuinely how that came to me. Genuinely, that is how that came to me. And basically, he set me a challenge. And I'll get to keep 50% of the profits if I can fix them. So, if I can't fix them, then they're going to be used as spare parts. But, uh, yeah, I'm not, sure, not really sure what kind of spare parts I'd be able to get from something like this. But, uh, that being said, let's get into the repair, shall we? So, like I said, I don't know anything whatsoever about these consoles. Unfortunately, this one in particular, I cannot turn on until I've taken it apart. So, I need to take it apart and basically just check it and... Oh my God. <laughs> oh, dear me. <laughs> this could be interesting. Well, yeah, that is... Kind of nasty. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, that is disgusting. What have I got myself into? Uh, now that I've piqued your interest, if you are new to the channel and you want to see me suffer some more, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notifications so that you're notified every time that I embarrass myself. Yeah, so let's see what we can do about getting these fixed, shall we? So, uh, well, <laughs> at least they've never been opened before. So this one's got no hard drive and it looks like it's been pretty badly dented. Uh, but, yeah, I'm really not sure what I'm going to be able to do with this. But what I have got to do, before I can do anything, is take this apart and clean the motherboard. Uh, and then and then see what I can do about fixing it. This is absolutely disgusting. So, yeah. Oh, it's going all over me. So I'm going to get the warranty stickers removed. Somehow, I don't think Sony are going to cover this under warranty. Although, it would be pretty interesting to send it off to them. <laughs> just to see what they say. Oh, dear. Oh, wow. That's... Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, there's maggots in it. There's literal maggots in the... Oh man. Oh. I don't even want to smell it. Like, I'm not even lying. Look, this is. I have not seen this console. You've just seen me remove the. Uh, oh, what's going on with the focus? Come on. There we go. Uh, you've literally just seen me remove the warranty stickers. I genuinely do not know what I'm getting, getting myself in for here. But this is, this is disgusting. This is genuinely disgusting. Okay, this is definitely the worst console I have ever come across in my life. Oh, but it's not that bad under the power supply, from what I can see. Yeah. I'm trying my best not to touch anything on that. Oh. 
bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol on the hands. Nothing beats isopropyl alcohol on uh, on hands that get cut regular. It looks like the brunt of it is over in terms of this side. I do not know what I'm getting myself in for on the other side. There are literally maggots. Well, <laughs> what once were poor maggots falling out of the console. I'm going to drop them on top of the case. That is literally the outer shell of a maggot right there. Um, when they die, they turn to what we call casters. I'm not sure on the official name for them, but we call it casters as fishermen. I don't think I can even reuse the screws off this. Like, I'm not going to be reusing that case. That's for, Oh, wow, it's actually stuck. I honestly do not know what this is. The case is bent, it's covered in larvae, it's covered in some sort of sticky residue, it's covered in dirt. Oh, no, it's on the board. I need to clean it before I can put it down on the table, genuinely. Okay, so if I put it that way, then it's going to lean up, right? I've got an itchy nose and I can't even scratch it. <laughs> I really can't even, I don't even want to scratch my nose. Okay. Well, I don't know what to do with the board, I'll be honest, because right now, I cannot turn this board on. I cannot attempt to turn this board on, it will throw it in seconds. There's dirt everywhere, there's some sort of sticky residue everywhere. I don't know what, sti what the sticky residue is. I do not have a clue. Okay, right, well, I think I'm just going to start cleaning and uh, hope that it comes up okay. I think this is where coronavirus started. <laughs> I think uh, I think this is where a lot of things started, namely my suffering. Now you can probably understand why I've had these for a couple of weeks. I mean, granted, I didn't realise just how bad it would be. But you can understand why I didn't want to get to them. Why I've been putting this video off. Yeah. This was clean. Well, I'm definitely not reusing the case. That's for sure. But you know what? I don't even know how long I've had these. It's got to be at least five weeks, four weeks, five weeks. Oh, I've still got it on this side. Yeah. Okay, I'm trying to clean as I go. I am trying to clean as I go. Well, I mean, I don't think this has been turned on. I can't see any obvious signs of corrosion. Well, well I think I need a test case now. To be honest. Oh wow, that's made such a mess of the desk. Oh, I'm hoping my hands are going to be sterile. I mean, I think they are. I would assume they're going to be sterile. Flammable, but sterile.
Right. I'm just going to try and dry some of the IPA away. So, in case you're wondering, the stuff that I'm using there is 99.9% .9 isopropyl alcohol. Uh, there should be a link in the video description to this stuff. Uh, fairly cheap off Amazon. £20 for 5 litres, I think, around that price. Okay, I think that's... Uh I think that's a little bit cleaner, don't you? <laughs> right, well. Next thing to do is get rid of this thermal paste. That's actually surprisingly still a little bit damp. I mean, it's not fresh, but it's, not, it's certainly not the worst thermal paste I've ever seen. So that's a plus, I guess. Oh dear. Right, I'm going to get a test case. Okie doke. Test case it is. Um, I'm going to have to get a test power supply as well. Uh, might help with some thermal paste. So in case you're wondering, I left that cable in because it felt, it felt kind of tight. So I left the cable in just so I didn't damage it. Well, I'm not bothered about the disk drive for now. I just want to see if it comes on. So, I just want to see if it turns on, first of all, before I do anything else. I just want to see if it powers up. I know it's going to overheat. As soon as I try and turn it on. But I just want to see if it does turn on. It does. So you notice I'm holding that down. But does it go to a white light? So I'm putting pressure on that there just so as it keeps pressure on the APU. Sorry, I just realised you guys can't see that. I think he has a blue light of death. So now the question remains is what is causing a blue light of death? And to be honest, it's probably going to be something to do with the APU. It's a lung pulsing blue light of death. So I've got to keep pressure on that. I'm just going to give it another 30 seconds. The fan keeps kicking in. It's a long pulsing blue light of death by the look of it. Okay, I'll tell you what, let's... Let's try and... Uh, let's try and get it into safe mode. So, first people just drain the excess power. And then we're going to press and hold on the power button. And that's not going to go into safe mode, it's taking too long. Yep, that's turned off. That has turned off. So, yeah, we definitely have some sort of critical fault, to say the least. Um, I don't think it's a safe bridge because the safe bridge would most likely turn off after six seconds and we wouldn't have any fan spin which we do um, I don't think it's the RAM because I can't feel them heating up I can't feel the RAM getting excessively hot so I think it's most likely going to be the uh, APU that's at fault so that leaves me with two choices. I can attempt to do a reball, which is the process of taking the APU off the motherboard and replacing the solder balls on the APU and then resoldering it back on. Or I can attempt a reflow. And reflow is always my first choice when it comes to a blue light of death uh, where I believe it might be the APU. And 
I mean, that's obviously what it's been thrown out for. He's got a blue light of death. Um, so it's pretty obvious how it's been thrown out for a blue light of death. Uh, so to do a reflow, I'm going to take the board back out. I'm going to remove the board. I'm going to be incredibly careful. And I actually got that out that time. Because I electrocuted myself on one of these earlier. Um, yeah, literally, I electrocuted myself, and that's exactly why I don't mess with power supplies. Uh, it wasn't severe, but it hurt. <laughs> it did hurt. Okay, so I'm going to get this thing set up. I need to get another camera set up so as you guys can watch it. Um, but obviously, uh, you know, like I said, this isn't something that the average technician is going to be able to do, uh, just given how crucial it is to get a nice even distribution of heat. And it took me a lot of practice motherboards and a lot of, uh, a lot of research to actually get my temperature profiles correct on the rework station so I don't recommend doing this in a live setting until you've practiced so if you do have a BJ rework machine just practice 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 um, because the more you practice the more you're going to get used to your particular machine I will try and walk it through and show you exactly what I'm doing and when and why uh, but your machine if you do have one is going to be completely different to mine uh, even if it's the exact same model so what I'm doing now is just adding some uh, some flux to the APU just around the edge I'm going to remove the thermal pads because otherwise they're gonna burn up and get destroyed and then what I'll do I'm gonna set the camera up on this tripod that you actually can't see uh, I'm going to set a camera up on my tripod just in front of the machine and uh, I'll try and film the process as it goes along. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the motherboard on the rework station right now and basically what we do with these rework stations is we set a predetermined pre profile and the profile basically tells the machine how hot to get how long to stay that hot for and then how long to hold until we move to the next stage and also how quick the uh, the heating elements will get that quicker that hot as well so we have a predetermined profile and as you can see from the bottom uh, from the right hand clocks or screens whatever you want to call them the profile is set to 220 degrees and the reason for that is because I want the bottom plate to heat up to the melting temperature of lead-free solder. Not because I want to reflow the entire board, but because I want to allow a even amount of heat distribution on the entire motherboard. And the reason I do that is to stop the motherboard going into thermal shock from having one really high temperature on one specific spot on the board. So what the machine is going to do is it's going to heat up the bottom plates first. So that's the ones that are underneath the motherboard. And there's four in total and they're heated up by infrared heat. And basically what it will do is it will heat that up first. It will gradually increase at one degree per second. And it will stop when it hits 220 degrees Celsius. When the machine reaches around about 180 degrees Celsius, the top plate is going to kick in and the top plate is going to slowly increase to uh, I think it's 100 degrees Celsius first and then it's going to hold there for around about 30 seconds all of this time the bottom plates are putting heat into the entire motherboard once it gets to 100 degrees Celsius and hold there it will gradually increase to I think it's 140 degrees it'll hold there for another 20 seconds or so and then it'll keep on doing that gradually increasing the heat up to 160 hold up to 180 hold up to 200 hold up to 220 hold and then up to 235 which is a maximum and then hold there for two minutes i never have to let it get that far that far i always stop the profile manually because the profile completes or rather the reflow process completes 
before he gets to that stage. The only reason for that is just to compensate for colder weather and stuff like that. But it always increases at one degree per second. So the reason for that is because I don't want it to increase too quickly and I don't want it to increase too slowly. So I want to put a nice gradual amount of heat in the board to stop any kind of thermal shock and to stop any kind of popcorning and things like that. So basically that's pretty much how the profile works. Um, as soon as I hit start the bottom plate will start to kick in or rather it will start like a 5 or 10 second countdown and then it will kick in. So I'm going to hit start now and then we can watch it go and uh, obviously I'm not going to make you wait all through the profile because it's around about 8 minutes so I'll skip through most of it or fast forward through at least um, and hopefully that gets rid of the blue light of death so I'm about to hit start and you can see a countdown timer on the left hand screen 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 and now it's kicked in to stage one. So you'll see now that this top number here will start increasing. Uh, I'll just tell you what the numbers mean. So this is the current temperature and I'm having to stretch here so I've had to take my microphone off my body. But this number here is the current temperature of the bottom plate. And this is the temperature what I want it to heat. So it's currently at 26 degrees and I want to heat 220. This one here is the current temperature of the top plate, and that's the temperature. Sorry, this is the, yeah, this is the, the temperature on the thermal sensor for the top plate, and this is the temperature I want it to reach. So you'll notice that says zero, and the reason it says zero is because I want that top plate, like I said, to stay off while the bottom plate is heating up, just so as it doesn't put, doesn't put too much heat in one particular spot at one particular time. So basically, that will read zero until it kicks into stage two which shouldn't kick in until it reaches around about 180 degrees celsius on the bottom plate uh, sometimes it's a little bit earlier sometimes it's a little bit quicker it doesn't make too much of a difference but the main the main priority is keeping that top plate off while the bottom plate heats up and once that bottom plate's heated up and the timer's gone down it will kick into stage two and that's where the top plate will start kicking in. Uh, I haven't got the thermal probes in because I don't generally need to monitor it with the profile that I've created. But I haven't got the thermal probes in. So the PV on the left hand side, the green number, will stay roughly around about the same. Um, if not exactly the same because the thermal probe is down on the, you know, dangling off the back of the machine i don't generally use the thermal probes because i just don't need to um generally i can i can gauge it by eye um and by you know my own spidey senses on how hot the board's getting and when it's ready to fully reflow the chip so generally i don't need those temperature sensors uh, some people use them some people don't it's all down to the individual technician but we'll let this run now. It's on 100 degrees Celsius. And as you can see, the bottom, the top plate still hasn't kicked in. You'll know when it kicks in because that left-hand red number will start moving. And then the top plate will start heating up. And there we go. So that's just started to kick in. And 188 degrees. So like I said, sometimes it's a few degrees off. Um, but generally around about the 180 degree mark for the bottom plate. To, or for the top plate to kick in um, so it's pretty accurate on my timings or what I believe are the right settings for this particular machine like I said I've had to create this myself um, and it's unique to my particular machine and you'll see it go up to 200 now I mean it all depends as well when it actually reaches melting point it all depends on how cold the board was and also how cold it is in the workshop as well so in the summer, that will reflow quicker. And still not done, which is quite surprising.
and done. Okay, so I'm not sure if that would have come across on camera. I'm hoping it did. But when I nudged the chip, it basically bounced back into place. It moved out of, out of place very slightly by a couple of millimetres and then it bounced back into place. And what that tells me is that every single ball underneath the chip was melted and that the reflow has complete. Uh, so basically all that will do now is, as you see, I move the top plate out of the way so as you can no longer heat up the chip. And basically now what I'll do is I'll leave the motherboard to cool down until the bottom plate reads around about 150 degrees Celsius. And then I'll, I'll bring the board back over to the workbench and start to reassemble it for testing. What I am going to do while I'm waiting for that is I'm going to take the disk drive out of the original case and I'm going to put it into the case that I'm working with. So I've got the disk drive, well I've got the original case just here. So obviously I need this disk drive if I'm going to be able to test it. So let's just get this out of here. So obviously, as you can see, that's still behind me over there. I wonder if we get a free game. That would be nice to have a new test game. Uh, I'm going to have to clean my hands again once I'm finished with this. There we go. That was a little bit, a little bit tight. And nah, we don't get a free game. Never mind. Right, well, that right there is not going to be reused. So that can go out back onto the scrap. So I'm basically doing this just while I'm waiting for the board to cool down. Because if it does work, then, you know, I'm going to be done. I'm going to be ready. I mean, I can't guarantee it's going to work, but you never know. I'm just going to give that a brush down. This isn't too bad, the disk drive. Just a bit of dust on this. So I think I can reuse the disk drive. Which is good because these are still fairly expensive. That's currently on 127 degrees. So by the time I've done this, it's going to be safe enough for me to move it. Which is good. I do like it to cool down naturally wherever possible. Uh, the reason for that is because, like I said, it's too hot to touch. And also, if I try and cool that down using the fans that are on the machine, it could cause the motherboard to end up going into thermal shock, which I don't want. Uh, so thermal shock is where it's rapidly heated up or rapidly cooled down. And basically what can happen is it can basically warp the board or rupture the board in some way shape or form so obviously that's a big no-no so we don't want that to happen all right so we've got we've got a couple of screws missing on this so i'm going to steal the screws from this because it saves me uh saves me finding some out so i'll steal these screws here okay we are ready for testing okay so let's get this clean then uh, let's get the uh, thermal place replaced and uh, hopefully it works so I'm just going to use isopropyl alcohol again just to get rid of the flux And having a look at the APU, it doesn't seem lopsided or anything like that, so it seems like it reflowed evenly. So fingers crossed it did. Uh, I have washed my hands when I went in the house. Uh, so, yeah, just a bit of thermal paste and cross our fingers. Cross our fingers. And 
and I need to find a top plate for this. Right, okay. Not in the best of conditions, but it's certainly better than the one I've got. That is for certain. And the first thing I need to do is find out whether or not it turns on and goes to a white light. And if it does, then I need to find out what software version it will be on and install a hard drive. Uh, like I said, I know absolutely nothing about this machine. I don't know where it's come from, what the history is. It could be running version 1 for all I know, uh, which would be awesome, but you never know. Right, fingers crossed it's going to work. Okay, well it hasn't shut straight back down. The fan's working. Is it going to go to a white light? Come on, please. Please go to a white light. Come on. I don't think he's going to. I don't think he'll go to a white light. And if that's the case, I don't think a reball will help either. No. Well, there's no harm in plugging the HDMI cable in. Just to see if anything comes up. But it's doubtful. No. Oh, that's a shame. That sucks. Well, it looks to be... It looks to be that number one is not fixable so it could be um, I doubt it's anything to do with the HDMI uh, a lot of people have that misconception that a uh, blue light of death is the same as a white light of death and most of the time it's not um, and the only way to really find that out is to do some diagnostics on the HDMI but I don't think it's worth it um, in this case I think this one is pretty much just as good as dead uh, which is a shame uh, because it cleaned up fairly well but it is what it is I mean uh, yeah we've been recording for an hour and 20 minutes I can probably compress, compress that to 25 minutes so let's have a look at this one shall we so number one is a failure uh, which is like I said a shame but it is what it is never mind Let's have a look at this one, shall we? So this one looks like it's in better condition. Um, somewhat better condition. But uh, let's see if this one turns on. It does. loading up okay i did just flick over to the capture card for a second there and it should reboot it um cannot start the ps4 um yeah that's because the hard drive was unplugged to start with but that's fine um let's have a look at actually, actually let's have a look what software versions on it so it comes up cannot start the ps4 so this one turns on this that's good news that is very good news how it turns on. I just want to find out before I actually reboot it what software version it's on. So I'm going to plug in a controller. 6.72. Wow. Okay. That's fantastic. So that's rebooting, but that is on a modifiable firmware, which is awesome. I think this one works. Genuinely, I think this one works.
Okay, a bit of a strange noise coming from where the fan is. So we could have a faulty fan. I wonder why this one's been thrown out. Okay, I think it might have a faulty hard drive. Let's check that. Let's check the hard drive. So I'm going to plug this into my external caddy. My external caddy is just here by the TV. Uh, let's switch over to my desktop. Uh, let's rescan Crystal Disk Info. And it's reading as good. The hard drive is reading as good. It seems some life, but it is reading as good. Okay. <clears throat> Right, so is it just stuck in a safe mode loop? Well, one way to find out, and that's to get it out of a safe mode loop. So let me just double check the inside of the SATA port, and that appears fine. So let's pop that in there. I'm going to press and hold the power button so as it goes into safe mode. Might seem a little bit counterproductive to get it into safe mode to basically get it out of safe mode. But let's switch over to the capture card now. There we go. And we're just going to press restart PS4. So all this might need is a good service. If that's the case, all I'll do is just swap it over to that case that I was just using. Okay, it's not showing up on the capture card now, but it's still showing up as can I start the PS4 on here, which is kind of odd that it's not showing up on the capture card, but... Uh, the way I've got it is this one HDMI cable, whatever goes through this cable, goes to the capture card and to the TV. Yes, I know there's a broken screen. Um, I bought it specifically with a broken screen uh, to use as a test screen. So as I can see what's on there without having to keep flicking over to the computer. Uh, so, yeah, let's take this apart. I'll worry about the software in a minute. But let's take this apart. Let's give it a good clean. Give it a proper, well, actually, let's just, uh, yeah, let's just service it. Let's service this one. Let's restore it. And hopefully we can get this working. That's pretty dusty. That's pretty dusty. I mean, <laughs> it's not as bad as the other one. Let's put it that way. But it's pretty dusty. So why has this been thrown out? Is it? software corruption um is it because it's overheating because that i mean that is that is dusty that's very very dusty so is it because it's overheating is it because it's been uh got firmware corruption uh, or hard drive corruption it wouldn't be firmware corruption well it could be firmware corruption but um yeah why has it been thrown out it is very dusty but i don't think that's the reason I don't think it will be thrown out just for overheating. So I think what I'm going to do to save a little bit of time, because I know the other one is fully clean, I'm just going to use the other case, I think. And it might help if I removed these screws as well. So I'll remove that, because he's got to come out anyway. And the power supply, there we go. Right, so let's just get this disk drive removed. So we're going to need that. No disc in there, that's a shame. But never mind, it's fine. And I'm going to reuse that 
top plate along with the motherboard and no signs of any kind of liquid damage or anything like that the battery was a bit loose though there we go okay so not going to reuse that i will clean it eventually but i'm not going to use it now so i'm going to give the board a brush down okay now let's clean the apu just get rid of the thermal paste that's on here there we go nice and clean and looking beautiful okay so let me just give the HDMI port a visual inspection and uh, that's a little bit bent actually just a little so I think I think what I'm gonna do is replace the HDMI port um, even though it appears fine for now it is starting to bend a little bit I will try and get that on the microscope as well so you can see it properly but it is starting to bend and it looks like a couple of the pins might be starting to come away so i want to get that hdmi port replaced now rather than later um so i'll switch to the microscope i'll show you that and then i'll get it replaced and uh then we'll get it into a new case get it all put back together and reinstall software okay so as you can see there that i mean it's not it's not critical to change the HDMI port, but I do have a feeling that this is going to start to break. So, yeah, I mean, if I push down on that there, you can see that's how it's meant to look, or thereabout. But it's not. It's actually a little bit warped. So, I'm going to get that port replaced and plus i don't like these v1 ports anyway the original playstation ports and uh, now i'm looking at it closer the pins look absolutely fine but i don't like these ports anyway because they break very very easily but you can see there where the port is warping so i'm going to get that changed okay so let's just get that microscope out of the way and i'm going to flip the board around And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my hot air at 480 degrees Celsius. And all I'm going to do is just heat up the entire area. So all I'm doing here is just basically hovering the hot air over the port. And I'm going to wait for the port to melt or wait for the port to loosen. And every few seconds I'm just going to give it a wiggle just to see how close it is. But even once it's melted, I'm not going to be putting this port away. I'm going to give it another 5 to 10 seconds afterwards to make sure it's fully molten before I actually remove it. That's going to prevent it from pulling any pads and prevent damage to the HDMI circuit. Okay, so it's starting to loosen. I can wiggle it freely now, but I'm going to give it 10 more seconds. And then I'm going to take the port out. And just like that. A perfect removal. So what I'm going to do now is just replace the solder that's there with some fresh lead solder. And um, what that's going to do is lower the melting temperature. And allow me to clean off the HDMI header. So I'll add some flux there. And I'll pop under the microscope. There we go. Let's zoom out a little bit so you can see the entire header. And then I'm going to take the soldering iron. And some leaded solder.
And just a blob of Lady Solder. And just drag the iron over the top. I'm going to replace the solder that's on these ground legs as well. There we go. And uh, now I'm going to use the solder sucker to clear out those ground holes. So I'm going to use the hot air gun. I'm going to put the nozzle back on so as I can angle it properly. And I'm going to knock it down to 40% airflow. And basically just heat up this solder again to suck out the solder from the ground holes themselves. So the reason I do that is so as I can just drop a port straight in without having to heat that up. And it makes sure that I get it in line as well. Okay, I'm going to flip the board around because he doesn't want to clean out. And then I'll heat up from this side. Okay, those two are finally cleaned out. There we go. Awesome. Right, so now that's done, I can focus on this area here. So this is obviously the HDMI head of itself. And I'm just going to get some fresh lead solder on that, just to replace what's on there at the minute. I'll just pre-apply some onto the tip. And then just drag over all of the pins and you'll see that all of them are nice and uniform there. So I'm going to grab a brand new port. So the ports I use are the V2 ports. Uh, so these are the decent quality ports, not the cheaper ones. So I'll just drop a port on there. I'm just going to press down a little bit there just to get that flat to the board. And that should be good enough. So, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to press down on the port and then I'm just going to tap a couple of these pins just to get it roughly in place. So, I'm going to tap a couple of pins with the soldering iron. Okay. Uh, nope, that's not gone down. So that should be even to the board now. Yep, that's good enough. So I can flip the board around and just solder the ground legs. Okay, so I'm just going to allow a little bit of heat to transfer. I'll clean that up in a minute. Alright, so I could do with a bigger tip on this, but I'm going to use this as an example to show you what you can do if you do struggle to get heat through to the board. So if you add some more flux, so I could just change tips, but I'm lazy, so, you know. So we add some more flux, and you'll notice that there's just a big blob of solder on one of the legs. 
but I'm going to use the hot air in conjunction with the soldering iron to help to transfer heat. I'm only going to do this as an example, but I could just change the tip if I wanted to. Okay, so I've got some solder onto each one now. So now I'm going to clean up. I'm also going to clean the tip to my iron. I'm going to add some more flux. And then I'm just going to sort out these ground legs. And that will do nicely for the ground legs. So let's flip the board around. And let's have a look at the pins themselves. So I'm going to give them a nudge to see which ones need any extra attention. And uh, not at all. Well, that was easy. Alright, so I'm going to clean the flux up then. And then we should be good to test. So, one freshly installed HDMI port. Now, like I said, that wasn't absolutely necessary. But I did notice it was a little bit bent. So... Uh, yeah, why not? That's the uh, that's the main question here. Why not? So I'm going to use the chassis from this one, and the reason I'm going to use the chassis from this one is because it's already been cleaned, so it saves me a little bit of time. Because all I've got to do is take this motherboard out, swap the disk drive daughter board, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so this is the motherboard that I couldn't fix. I might revisit it one day, maybe. But for now, it goes into the donor pile. Bit sad, but never mind. Okay. So I'm going to pop some fresh thermal paste on here. I'm going to clean this stuff off here. So I'll get rid of that stuff. Pop that there. Let's pop that hard drive in there. But I'll get a hard drive screw. But I don't think I have one directly to hand right this immediate second. Uh, but that's fine. I can manage without a hard drive screw right now. And I'm going to remove this daughter board from here. And actually, I need to remove this metal frame completely because it's trapped. But I'll use the other one. Okay. Okay, so that's the daughter board to that I'll stick that down with some tape later so I know it belongs to that board I need this daughter board so luckily these are the same model as well they're both the SIA model and they both use the BDPO one uh, zero one zero boards so exactly the same just means I haven't got to clean that disk drive get rid of that there and almost ready to go so all I've got to do now is just throw a few screws in this uh, like I said I don't have a hard drive screw to hand right now and I don't know 
at the moment where my disk drive, uh, my uh, PS4 screws are. So my box of PS4 screws, they're around somewhere, but I just don't know exactly where. Right, so as you can see, the the case itself doesn't look great. So what I'll do is I'll try and find out my brand new case. I do, I'm pretty sure I have one somewhere. Uh, but I'll try and find that out at a later time. Uh, to be honest, I didn't really prepare for this video. I, I didn't expect to actually get this to turn on. Um, I mean, granted it turned on anyway, but I didn't expect it to, that's for sure. Okay, so let's see if we get a display. So I'll switch over to the capture card then. Okay, for some reason it's not showing on there. But it is showing on the TV. So it should be okay. So what I need to do is I need to download version 6.72. So if I go to a web browser and type in darksoftware.xyz, then we'll come to a website where we can, of course, log in. And of course, I've just pressed back on the mouse because I am foolish. I've done it again because the thing's in my way. So let's go PS4 and then firmware list. And we want version 6.72. So we're going to click download there. So in the meantime, I have found a screw. So I'm going to screw that in and then all I've got to do is find a hard drive door which I do have some but just not that I can put my hand to. Uh, that is a black screw not a silver screw but I don't mind if you don't. Okay and that's copied over so or rather that's downloaded so I'm just going to copy it over to the USB. Okay and that's copied over so I'm just going to rename this. to ps4 update.pup and done so that's that done then for some reason i don't know why it's not showing for uh the capture card so what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch it to my backup capture card if i can there we go that's working on that one so not a great capture card but <laughs> it'll, it'll get through it'll do the job for now so I'm going to plug in the USBs there we go and let's click OK and let's let this run OK and this should run through so I'm going to let this install um, I'll probably fast forward through this bit anyway because all it's going to do is just keep going up until it gets to 100% um, and then I'll resume when it's done. Right, okay, so I've just come back and I don't know what's happened here, but this is reinstalling. Uh, this is reinstalled with the data on there. Hmm. So obviously I'm going to have to blur out the name. So it's registering with 1080p. And it's not going to allow me to sign in because Obviously, we're on the wrong software version. Cool. So, that's working. Let me disconnect from the internet because I don't want to update. 
Um, it doesn't appear to be reading that disc, but that could be the fact that that disc is absolutely filthy. So let's try Star Wars Battlefront. Yeah, disk drive is working. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. Well, that appears to be all working. Um, I don't know how it's just reinstalled it with the customer's data. Uh, not the customer. Uh, sorry, I'm used to working on customer devices. I don't know how it's reinstalled it with the uh, with the data that was on there first. Um, so, where's the logic in that? I asked it to reinstall, but I don't know. But that all appears to be working, so that's absolutely great. Um, so I've got one working out of the two. I might do a revisit on the other one in the future, but that was absolutely disgusting. So that, to be honest, will probably end up as a donor board, I'll be honest with you. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments down below. If you do enjoy this type of content and you want to see me suffer more, then be sure to let me know and I'll do my best to punish myself. Um, but that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I'll always do my best to answer. If you want to support the channel, you can, of course, use the Amazon affiliate links in the video description. Uh, I'll get a little bit of a kickback every time you buy something from my links. You don't necessarily have to buy the stuff that you see in the links, but if you click on one of the links and then buy something else, for example, I'll make a little bit of money. Um, and that helps to support the channel. You can also become a channel member for as little as £1.99 per month. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, see you later.